I want to declare it over you. May he rest upon your heart. Come on, Levites, turn to your neighbor and say, may he rest, may he rest upon your heart. Come on, say it again. Say, may he rest, may he rest upon your heart. Upon your Hallelujah. Heart. That's what we're going to declare today. Yeah, yeah. Come on, say. Like the dew on me. May he rest, may he rest upon your heart. That's our prayer for you today. Night, Pastor Hurst will be the Laura Hill Missionary Baptist Church's guest revivalist on Friday, September the 29th at 7 p.m. The combined choir will accompany him. Saturday, September the 30th, the best way to start your Saturday morning and weekend is with powerful prayer and praise. Join us at 8 a.m. for Saturday morning meditation and prayer. Sunday, October the 1st, Sunday school conference call is scheduled from 10 to 10:30 a.m. And at 11 a.m., our in-person morning worship service. Our prayer list is posted on the church's Facebook page. Please uh, join us in praying for Deacon William E. and Elders Vera Hollinsworth on the passing of their beloved son, Williams Hollinsworth II, who we call Irby. LSNBC Emergency Medical Information Card. Please fill out and return your EMI card. The emergency response team thanks everyone who has thus far returned their cards. A completed card will ensure that you receive the appropriate medical care in the event of an emergency. Thank you. Uh, Pastor Brees, I wish to, to thank those who assisted on yesterday, our usher's ministry, those who, um, Brother McEvey for parking, uh, to share in the homegrown service of Brother Melvin McLaughlin. Uh, we thank you so much, ushers and media ministers. Thank you so much for your assistance. On this past Tuesday, I want to thank uh, Deacon Black, uh, Reverend Black Flipper, and Sister Teresa, and Sister Anita for being here to assist them. And I understand it was a very good workshop. Uh, ministry, me meeting, ministry meeting is following worship today. For those of you all who are interested in being a part of this vital ministry, please do come and, and join this, um, this ministry. Um, Wednesday, September the 27th through the 29th, I'll be in revival at, at uh, Law Hill. I'm asking for your prayers and those who came to come and, uh, to attend in the combined choir on Friday night. I must say you have really fallen off on Friday night. Uh, the thing I'm only saying is this, that be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Amen. And remember who we've been faithful to, uh, not Bruce Hurst, but unto the Lord. Amen. Come on, talk back to me. Come on. Amen. Amen. So 
so we're asking that you would, would support that. Uh, we thank you for those who are participating uh, in, our, in our ministries. October 11th and 12th, we'll have our um, revival uh, from, by, again, by Pastor Derek Horton, Impact uh, Church of Durham. So please make preparation for, for that. And then our homecoming, uh, October 15th, and Pastor Manera and First Baptist uh, will be here. Matter of fact, they're closing their church, and they all will be here for our, amen. 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 October the 29th, we'll have, our, we'll have another stewardship Sunday with Minister Ivan Watkins, who came last year. Uh, he'll come and talk about, I shouldn't have told you because some of you are going to come because it's about tithing. Amen. Amen. I just, amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good, isn't he? Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. I would bless the Lord at all times. His praise should continue to be in my mouth. My soul should make her boast in the Lord and the humble should thereof and magnify him. Lift up your head, O your gates, and be lifted up the everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. He is the King of glory. Come on. He, come on. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as our mass choir shall lead us in worship. You may let them come in. Amen.
For whom you have made a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, and they that pass in the path of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May we bow for prayer. Oh, gracious and almighty God, it's once again that we come to call on your holy and precious name. Father God, we just want to thank you for last night's sleep and this morning's rising. God, we just want to thank you for everything. God, we want to thank you for a mind set to come to worship and praise your holy and precious name. God, we all have sinned and come short of your glory. Yeah. But God, we are so grateful that you have forgiven us of our sins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Father God, we ask that you just come into this place. Yeah, give yeah. Pastor Hurst a word to give us, Lord yeah, God, Lord. in the mighty yeah. name of Jesus. Father God, I ask that you just have your way, Lord God. Yeah. Have your way, Lord God, in yeah. the mighty name of Jesus. That some man, woman, boy, girl may say, I come running, Lord. Saying, what must I do to be saved? And Lord God, when we did everything that you assigned our hands to do, when this place went on for us a home yes. anymore, God, we ask you for a home somewhere around your yes, kingdom. Lord. Where we can continue to praise your name forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to have our affirmation of faith. I ask that you remain standing and pay attention to our monitors as we recite our affirmation of faith. First all, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into the third he rose is again from the dead. He ascended into the heavens and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in the church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may have your seat. At this time, we're going to have a welcome video by our media team. Hey there. Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church. We want to thank our media center for that presentation on this morning. And when, on the behalf of our pastor, Pastor Bruce C. Hurst, we would like to welcome any first-time visitors that we have. 
and our people that are on, on, on uh, Facebook. We just want to welcome you this morning. We hope you enjoy yourself, and this won't be your last time. Amen. At this time, we're going to have a homecoming up here by Deacon Lonnie Black. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Glad to see all you smiling faces. And again, on October the 15th, I'd like to see all you smiling faces back to come help us out with homecoming so that we can reach our goal, what we had planned for. And all you members know what the, our obligation is. It's 125. And for all you visitors, all you friends, and all the folks is here. We'd like you, if you want to leave us $125, we will appreciate it. And so don't forget, October the 15th is our big day, our homecoming day. Thank you. Amen. Let us stand now for the offertory responsive reading. This is a time in which we should all be excited. It's tithing and giving time. To whom does the tithe belong? Why should we tithe? Should we tithe our gross or our net? How much should we tithe? What is God's promise to the tither? Reading together, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Let us pray. Our most gracious and heavenly Father, we ask that you would receive all of the blessings that are going to be given on this day. For every giver and for every person who desires to give, but for whatever reason, they may not trust to give. God, we ask blessings upon every individual here on today. For those who are online, we thank you and we ask for blessings upon them. Now, Heavenly Father, we ask also that you bless our offerings and the blessings of our gifts of our offerings today so that it will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. This is our prayer. Amen and amen. At this time, we will now receive our offering. We would ask that our trustees come forward, and if you would face my right, and then follow the directions of the ushers.
good morning. It's that time for a word, a word from God. And Reverend Hurst is going to come, and he's going to give us what God has given to him. And following, but before, after you hear a selection from my combined choir, the next voice you will hear will be that of Pastor Bruce C. Hurst. Amen. Thank you. 
let us pray. Oh, Lord God, how excellent is thy name in all of the earth. For there is none like you. You're so worthy. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you alone, you're just worthy. We come this morning giving you thanks, giving you praise, giving you glory giving you honor because it belongs to you hallelujah to your name blessed be your name and pray now Lord for the next few moments you come and stand in my body and preach with my mouth in Jesus name amen amen I want to thank um, the music ministry. Thank you so very much. Choir, God bless you all. God bless you all. Uh, Chris, we thank you so much for helping us. Amen. Amen. And Chris, we're going to have to lock you up. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. God bless you. What a wonderful gift. God bless you. In my 30-some years of ministry, this is the first time that this, this happened to me. I had... Um, I was on the phone with a few people who was going through some stuff, and and now people, I guess they call when they're hurting. So they called me on Sunday morning, and I had um, prepared to preach the gospel according to Judas. And I left out with the wrong notebook. That's the truth. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. So. And uh, what, I, what I have is kind of what I talked about yesterday. So we will see what the Lord, what the Lord, what the Lord has to say, man. Amen. Amen. I don't think it, ha I think it happened by providence. Maybe the Lord was saying that it wasn't time to talk about, about, to talk about Judas. And I was going to raise the question, did any of you all have any Judas running in your veins? Amen. Judas, Judas had a problem with worship and talked about that woman who had uh, given, uh, anointed Jesus with, uh, with that oil, 300 pence. And Judas got mad because he didn't see worship as worthwhile. And many of you don't see worship as worthwhile. You come to church out of routine but not come to worship him. Amen. Amen. Uh, Song of Solomon, uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 1, first clause. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, uh, verse 1. I am the road of Sharon. I want to talk about my road of Sharon. You may be seated. Throughout the Holy Scriptures, there are 700 images and portraits and descriptions of Jesus Christ. We should not be surprised because of the vast number of titles and descriptions of him in the Holy Writ. Biblical names by which our Lord is applauded, is worshipped and praised and followed. Why? Because one name and one picture come short of telling who he is. Our advocate, the anointed one, bread of heaven, living water, line of the tribe of Judah, the lamb of God, polished shaft, the rock of ages, the ancients of days, the horn of salvation, the word made flesh, the bishop of our soul, the good shepherd, the anointed one, chief cornerstone, wonderful counselor, the mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, a bomb in Gilead, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Well, there's just not enough 
that we can say to describe Jesus. We can go old time where he's a heart fixer, mind regulator, ward in a thirsty season, bridge over troubled water. Jesus is everything that we need. Jesus has it. If you need peace, Jesus has it. If you need deliverance, Jesus has it. If you need healing, Jesus has it. Whatever you need, Jesus has it. Tell your neighbor, I know that's right. Amen. Amen. Sharon was a plain in northern Palestine. It was the largest plain in all of Palestine. In the time of Solomon, it was considered a beautiful and majestic plain because many beautiful flowers grew there. In biblical times, anybody could travel there and gather up roses that grew there. A rose from Sharon was not like the rose that grew up in Solomon's garden. Shut up within high walls, cultivated only to be touched, gazed upon, and enjoyed by elite few. The roses of Sharon was available and accessible to everybody. Anybody could enjoy their beauty, smell, their fragrance, or hold them in their hand. Saints of God, so it is with Jesus, our rose of Sharon. He's accessible, available to everyone who would, who would come to cherish the beauty and fragrance of his being. This was the message on that holy night that Christ was born to the lowly shepherds. We bring you good times of great joy to all people. There are those who want to box Jesus in or build a fence around him and say to everybody who does not see things according to their narrow perspective, unless you approach Jesus our way, unless you praise Jesus our way, unless you are baptized our way, unless you get him the way we got him or look a certain way, only then can you share in him. Jesus is our personal possession. That's not how you get to our roles of Sharon. Jesus is not hidden behind some strange formula or esoteric doctrine that is acceptable to a few. You don't have to read any special Bible, magazine, or newspaper to discover him. He's available to everybody. He simply says, whosoever will, let him come. If you confess me with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised me from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you need him this morning, all you have to do is call his name. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Just call his name. The more you call it, the better you feel. You can call him in the morning. You can call him at noon. You can call him in the midnight hour. Anytime you call Jesus, everything will be all right. No matter who you are, no matter if you have a pre-existing condition, we all had a pre-existing condition called sin. We were conceived in sin. No matter who you are where you are, what you have done, where you have been. He's available to all people. He's a righteous that will never be diminished. He's a peace that will never be disturbed, a joy that can never be discouraged, a hope that cannot be destroyed. He's a purity that cannot be defiled. Jesus is available to everybody. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus no, not one. None else can heal all our soul diseases. Jesus knows all about our struggle. He will guide us till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. Not only is Jesus available and accessible, as we all know in our culture, the roles have become a symbol of love. Ladies are ecstatic about receiving roses 
as an expression of love. Jesus Christ is our role of Sharon, is God's eternal reminder of how much we are loved. There are times on this journey called life we feel very lonely and unloved. And the epidemic of loneliness is spreading across America. There are times when we feel like we in there all by ourselves. We feel like no one cares. No one understands. We feel like we have to bear our burdens alone. We feel like we're between a rock and a hard place. We feel like our world is spinning out of control. We feel like we don't have a friend in the world. Things seem to be going from bad to worse. When it seems like our prayers seem to be unanswered, we begin to wonder if Jesus indeed heard our prayers. That's when we need to think about Jesus as our rose of Sharon, whose coming was motivated by love, whose life reverberated with love, whose actions was driven by love, whose death was for the sake of love. Nothing can explain why Jesus chose to exchange heaven glory for their shame. Nothing but love. Nothing can explain why Jesus left the chatting of angels for the cursing of men. Nothing but love. Thank the Lord for his love. Thank God for his love. There's a story told of a young girl who had a large dog collection. In his collection were a number of expensive dolls from all over the world. Some were even rare porcelain dolls dressed in the finest silk. One day, a visitor who was looking through the collection asked a young girl which was her favorite. The young girl asked, do you really want to know? He replied, yes, I really do. The young girl then reached under the bed and pulled out a shoebox. In the box was an old, raggedy dog. Its face was smudged and dirty. Some of the hair was missing, and the dress was torn and stained. When the arms were missing and the leg dangling by a couple of threads, the young girl beamed as she clutched the dog to her chest and said, this is my favorite dog. The visitor was surprised and said, with, with all those fine dogs that you have, why is this raggedly torn dog in our condition your favorite? Because the young girl replied, I realize that if I don't love her, nobody will. Jesus, I rose and shared and saying this morning as I close. If no one loves you, I will. If no one understands you, I will. If no one cares for you, I will. If no one heals your pain, I will. If no one forgives you of your past, I will. If no one will be there in the time of trouble, I will. If no one will hold you in the midnight hour, I will. There is a name. I love to hear. I love to sing his worth and sound like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, 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 how I love Jesus. Jesus woke me up this morning. Jesus started me on my way. Jesus put food on my table. Jesus. Men ways out of no ways. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God. Thank God for Jesus. And saying so, God, we got to do something about all these folk committing suicide. People between the ages of 10 and 19. Suicide has increased about 30-40%. Suicide is self-murder when people believe there's no hope. 
There's no way out. They don't know what to do. But the rose of Sharon, he's available and he's accessible. One report I read said every time I gather in church, somebody comes to church contemplating suicide. They've had suicidal ideations. They've thought about it because the circumstance of life is so bad. But know this morning that Jesus loves you. There's no situation that you are in that Jesus cannot get you out. In Psalm 46, it says, God is our refuge, a present help in the time of trouble. That word trouble in the Hebrew means tight, a tight place. But Jesus is so powerful that whenever you get in a tight place, you can't go this way, that way, this way, but Jesus is powerful enough to reach in your tight place and bring you out. Yes, he is. Anybody ever experience him in a tight place? He will bring you out. May we all stand. And there are so many persons who are hurting this morning and just cannot see no way, no way out. But the Lord, he's able to do it seedily, abundantly, above that we could ask or think. Apostle Nazarene, come and lead us in a word of prayer. Come and lead us in a word of prayer. Yes. Yeah. Come and give God praise. Amen. Amen. God, we thank you. Hallelujah, we praise you. My God Almighty. Oh God, you're worthy to be praised. And you're worthy to be honored. Oh God, you're not our genie. And you're never our Santa Claus. But you're the rock. You're our shield. You're our buckler, and you're our hiding place. Hey, God, thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we come before you today, God, after we have listened to the word. May it get into our core, our system, and cause change, Father. Let's not just not read the word like a book, Mama Shiki. Let us read the Bible, my God, as if it's life. Because life is in the Bible. Oh God. Oh God, so we repent of all our sins and our iniquities. What we did last night, yesterday, and a few minutes ago, Father God. Hey God, we thank you. Wash and cleanse our hearts, my God. Teach us how to love our neighbors, my God. As we love ourselves, my God Almighty. Oh God, we can speak it, but let us demonstrate it today. Oh God, we lift up the teenagers, my God. The ones that are committing suicide. Hey God, because, oh God, they don't have someone, oh God, that they can lean on. Hey God. 
Oh God, let them lean on the prayers of Lead Spring today. Let them lean on the Spirit of God. Let them lean on the prayers that there is going out. No more suicide. Oh God Almighty. Let your word go, Father. And it's not only natural uh, suicide, oh God, but spiritual suicide. Because those things, Father, that we are caught up with, oh God, God and entangle with my God sometimes come to kill, to steal, and to destroy us, my God. And that is a form of suicide. Oh God, let the words of our mouths, oh God, and the meditation, oh God, recite, be acceptable in your sight, oh Lord. Oh God, because you're our strength and you're our redemption. Team. Ah, a bruise red father God you will never despise oh God in the mighty name of Jesus so we thank you hallelujah we thank you oh God we thank you for your love oh God we thank you for your help oh God we thank you for fixing the detail Fix that problem. Fix that home. Fix that child. Fix the finances. Heal our bodies, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, bless this house. Bless this house to overflowing and abundance. Abundance in you. And if you're watching online, this is for you too. Is the God can meet you exactly where you are. You don't have to fix up, just come as you are. So I invite you to come to Jesus because he's your only saving grace. So we thank you, Lord. Oh, God, because you're a good, good father. Hey, you're a good daddy. And we love you on today. Oh, God, may the grace and the peace that pass it all human understanding. Keep our minds and our heart in perfect peace. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we give you honor. We say thank you. Thank you, Father. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. May standing. If you're here this morning, if you do not know Jesus, and you've never met him, the Bible says if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth and believe your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. With the heart, man, believe unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Do we have one here this morning who will give your life to Jesus? Would there be one? Would there be one? You may be seated now. We thank you so much for uh, attending our worship this morning. And we do ask that you will certainly pray and be with us this week. And Laura Hill Missionary Baptist Church, beginning on Wednesday night, that you'll be praying for, praying for that revival. You do be praying for us. Again, thank you for those who are visiting with us. Uh, we thank you for you coming to be a part of our worship experience this day. God bless you, and we thank you so, so very much. Again, Chris, we thank you for, for helping us. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so, thank you so very much. Amen, Scott, we thank you for leading us in, in worship. Amen. The media ministry and those who are interested in being a part of our media ministry, uh, would you remain in the sanctuary after worship this day? Again, may we all stand. Oh, Father God, again, we're so thankful that you are our rose of Sharon. You are accessible, and you're always available. You're just as close as the mentioning of your name. And for that, we're so thankful. I pray that you would bless us and bless our youth who going to school and our schools are turning the war zone. Our teachers and administrators, blessings be upon them. Now bless us and keep us. Now may the grace of God and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest now and abide with each of us henceforth now and forevermore. 
and to redeem what the Lord said. Amen. Amen. And amen.